He was able to endure yeah. the cross, endure the suffering, endure the temptation, and then even despise, discount, make light of the shame that came along with it. Yeah. Now, now, how is he able to do that? He set something before him. Right. He didn't let what was right in front of him stop him because he had something beyond what was in front of him. It was the joy, the joy of seeing the world come to, G come to God, the joy of men being able to get back in right standing, have fellowship and relationship with God the joy of you and I being born again was not worth him not being able to endure where he was at that present time yeah, yeah that shame that come along with but I can endure this right now because the shame is only temporary yeah. in a minute I'm gonna be raised up I'm gonna be exalted but I cannot afford to forsake yeah. where I am right now how is he able to endure? Because he, he kept the mark there. Yeah. He kept the mark. I'm, I'm going to die for the sins of the world. That's the mark. And, and he kept his eyes on the mark. Look, and we, the Bible said we have to look at Jesus. Because look what happens now. If, if we don't, it, it picks up in verse number three. It says, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be yeah. wearied. That word weary, weary means tired. You get tired and faint. Faint there means put off. Where? In your mind. See, that's where it starts. In your mind. It starts in your mind. Because, see, you start going through. You're dealing with pressure. You're dealing with obstacles. You're dealing with all of these things. And so, so what do you do? You, you get tired. You get tired. And when you get tired, if you don't consider him, if you don't consider Jesus, you, you don't think Jesus was... Chapter number eight, Job chapter number eight. And while you're going there, repeat after me, God's word is life to me. It is health to my flesh. As I hear the word of God, my mind is renewed, my faith is increased, and my understanding enlightened. My heart is good ground for the seed of God's word. And as I receive tonight, I get wisdom, revelation knowledge, and in all my getting, I get understanding. Verse number five of Job chapter number eight said, If thou wouldest seek unto God betimes and make thy supplication to the Almighty, if thou wert pure and upright, surely now uh, he would awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous. Verse seven. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Though thy beginning be small, thy latter end should greatly increase. If you look at the message translation of that particular passage, because that's where we're taking our subject matter from, he says, here's what you must do, and don't put it off any longer. Get down on your knees before God Almighty. If you're as innocent and upright as you say, it's not too late. He'll come running. He'll set everything right again, reestablish your fortunes, even though you're not much right now. You'll end up being better than ever. Even though you're not much right now, you'll end up better than ever. I don't know about you, but I declare that my, be my end shall be much greater than my beginning. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say the courage. To begin, to begin again. And so that's, that's what we're talking about. That's what this series is about. And so first of all, life is a series of new beginnings. Why is that? Because we've all have had to start over in some area, if not multiple areas of our lives. Beginning again is not always, you know, going back to square one as it were. Perhaps it could be just picking up 
from where you left off, some point or some place where you discontinued uh, in your actions or in your efforts, and something that you've allowed to just kind of lie dormant, and now you just want to go back to it and pick it up again. Again, as I mentioned my last time with you, it could be uh, the writing of a book. Uh, that you've just kind of come to a halt on. It could be going back to school. It's not always going back to square one, but sometimes just picking up from where you ended and where you left off from. It's also taken up again after interruption, after delay, a failed attempt, and or a denial. Now, although the objective of this series is to stimulate you to begin again beyond your give up, it is more about courage than it is beginning again. Because while there are many individuals uh, who occupy this room that I believe could possibly have faith, could have hope, could have some expectations, uh, could have opportunities, could have visions, could have dreams, uh, and while those same individuals have those things, I believe many times they lack courage. Yeah. So today is lesson five, and it will be our last lesson for this particular series. And so I submit to you the missing ingredient to beginning again is the lack of courage. The missing ingredient to beginning again is the lack of courage. Amen? So what is courage? Uh, we've defined courage. We said it's strength or power in the face of in the face of, and you can feel it in blank, uh, from difficulty, pain, fear, obstacles, uh, you know, temptation, transitions, uh, whatever it may be, grief, uh, but it's in the face of those things. Consequence, not only that, but also in the face of risk, because many times to begin again, uh, there's some risk that you have to take. And so it's, it's being able to uh, make a decision, a deliberate decision in a forward motion to persevere uh, because of your conviction as well as your resolve. And so we talked about the courage to forget the past, to reach for those things that are ahead of you, and to also press forward toward the prize, toward uh, the mark. And we, we've labeled that mark or that prize uh, also as a vision, a vision, a goal, a desire, an aspiration, an opportunity, uh, something you desire could be the promise of God, and so being able to press toward that thing. And so, uh, my last time with you, I shared with you that uh, the lack of courage, it confines you to four things. It confines you to your fears, it confines you to your frustrations, uh, confines you to your failures, and finally, it confines you to your phobias. Turn with me in your Bibles to Proverb uh, chapter 24. Proverb chapter 24. Uh, last week, uh, Minister Jackie did an outstanding job uh, in sharing the eight principles of courage, eight principles of courage. I thought those were very good. And so, in this series, we've seen how God constantly uh, commanded and encouraged Joshua to be strong and be very courageous. Not only uh, did God encourage him? Not only did God command him, but we also found out uh, my last time with you that even Moses himself, as Joshua's, uh, as Joshua's mentor, as Joshua's leader or pastor, as it were, uh, he did the same thing. Uh, he encouraged Joshua. He, he commanded him to be strong and be very courageous because it is clear when you read the Scripture that what Joshua lacked to step up to the plate and do what God called him to do was courage. Amen. And so, by the Spirit of God, I am encouraging you to be strong and very courageous. One thing you cannot change, you are always going to have challenges. You're always going to have tests. Challenges are not always a sign that you've done something wrong. Uh, challenges, it could be a sign that you're just right smack dab in the middle of the will of God. Uh, but you're just being challenged. You're going through some things because the enemy is not just going to allow you to just waltz into what God has for you. And so he's going to challenge your resolve on every end to try to get you to back down, to get you to throw in the towel, to get you to quit, to get you to give up. But you are going to have to have courage. You're going to have to be strong and very courageous. The Bible says that the righteous are as bold as a lion. 
Amen. And so we shouldn't be purring like kittens. But we ought to be roaring like lions. Amen. Come on, check the person next to you. Make sure you're sitting next to a lion. You're sitting up, sitting up there next to no kitty cat. <laughs> Amen. Up there, tell me, meow. You know, you're sitting next. You're going to be sitting next to somebody who can roar. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> now, the key to courage, the key to courage, and this is, this is awesome when I begin to see this in Scripture, the key to courage is waiting on God. The key to courage is waiting on God. Now, look at verse 10 of Proverbs 24. If thou faint in the day of adversity, come on, thy strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity, the day of adverse circumstances, the day of hardship, the day of challenge, the day of trouble, the day of testing, the day of temptation. If you faint in that day, during that time, if you faint, it's because your strength is small. Wow. And you know, we all like to, you know, I like to believe I'm, I'm strong. And, and no doubt you like to believe you're strong, but guess what? We are not gonna know until your day come. And when your day come and when my day come, then we're going to find out how strong we really are or how weak we really are. So trouble, trouble, now, now listen to this because, you know, we hear things, you know, trouble comes to make you strong. Trouble doesn't come to make you strong. A teacher doesn't give you a test to make you smart. A teacher gives you a test to see how smart you are. Amen. And so trouble comes not to make you strong, but trouble comes to reveal where you really are. It, it, it exposes where you really are. Amen. If, if there's another translation, the, the new, the, uh, the, the, the new, the new, C, uh, the new, C, the NCV, which is the new century version, it reads like this. If you give up when trouble comes, it shows that you're weak. If you give up, when trouble comes. And, and mainly, that's when people give up. When trouble comes. People don't give up in, in good times. People don't, people don't quit. People don't think, don't entertain, you know, walking away when things are well, when things are great, you know, when it looks like you're progressing, you know, when it looks like you're not being challenged. That's not when people give up. The Bible says if you quit, when trouble comes, if you quit because things didn't turn out the way you wanted them to, if you give up because there's some pressure against you, if you give up because you've run into a brick wall, the Bible said, you're weak. You're weak. Your strength is small. That's why, not because the devil is busy, not because, watch this, if I quit when trouble comes, it's not because I didn't have desire. If I quit when trouble come, it's not because I didn't have expectation. If I quit when trouble come, it's not because I didn't have vision. If I quit when trouble come, it's because I found out, I just found out that I'm weak when I thought I was strong. And I don't know about you, man, but I, I, would, hate to, I would hate to get to a challenge and find out I'm not where I thought I was. But, but thank God, even in that, you know, God will still help us, praise God. You know, he's not just going to leave us out there and say, well, you should have been strong enough. No, he will help us, but then it's going it's to be an eye-opener for me that I need to get back in the, in the spiritual gym and, and work some stuff out so I can strengthen myself because I just discovered there's an area of my life where I am weak and I thought I was strong. If I faint in the day of adversity, if I quit when trouble comes, then the Bible says I'm weak. Amen. Amen. And, and, and thank God, thank God, you know, the, the challenge came uh, because it gives me an opportunity to work on some stuff I need to work on. I, I really thought I was past cursing them out. And, and man, I'm telling you, they, I, I just found out that them doing what they did sent me there. And I, 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 really thought, I really thought I was past this. I didn't even know I had any more curse words left in me. 
<laughs> well, boy, I'm telling you, they reach way down in there. So, so now I've just discovered how weak I really am. You know, I, I thought I was through hollering at women that I wasn't married to. But that thing right there. <laughs> We, we. So you, you gotta, gotta watch that. Amen. Amen. And you gotta be honest with yourself. You gotta be honest with yourself to realize, man, I'm weak in this area. Because guess what? Just see when I discover I'm weak, the tests don't stop coming. The test does not, those tests will keep coming. They'll, they'll keep coming. And so if I know they're going to keep coming, you know, I, I, need, I need to do some improving in this particular area of my life, whatever it may be. The Bible says, if I faint in the day of adversity, faint. This word faint here, it means forsake. Forsake. If I forsake all that I've been taught, forsake my confession, forsake what I've been believing for, forsake the promise of God, Forsake coming to church. If I start forsaking in the day of challenge, it's because my strength is small. Amen. 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 You know, you give up on what you've been believing God for. Ah, uh, you know, I don't know. And so the Bible says because your strength is small. So, so go, go with me in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And let's look at how we can deal with this so we don't faint. I don't know about you, I don't want to faint in my day of adversity. Amen. I have all kind of adversity, and I don't want to, I don't want to fight in my, faint in my day of adversity. You're going to have to fight. <laughs> Even if you don't want to fight, you're going to have to fight. Amen. Amen. You know, you can't forfeit Amen. your faith fights, you know, and so you can stay in the ring and get knocked out and not fight back and do all of that, but that's not going to bring you into victory either. Uh, you know, I don't want to faint in my day of adversity. When the challenges come, I want to be up to it. Amen? Amen. And even if I find out, you know, uh, you know oh, man, I'm a little weak here. I'm, I'm going to do what I have to do to get strong in this area. Yes. Amen. Amen. And so you got to be able to, you got to be able to keep yourself, keep yourself strong. Amen. 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 And the Holy Ghost will help you. The Holy, Ghost, the Holy Ghost will help you. You know, a couple of days ago, <laughs> I was getting ready to come down. Um, you know, just some, some stuff was going on. And, and so I was getting ready to go down, come down. And when I say come down, you know, Nehemiah said, listen, I'm on the wall. I'm doing the good work. And I ain't going to let nobody get me down from here. I'm going to keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So I was getting ready to come down. I said, you know what, I'm, I'm going to call this person. I'm, I'm going to call them. I'm going to call them and let them know how I feel about this. <laughs> I did. And, uh, and so I had already rehearsed what I was, what I, no, what I was going to say, because I was going to call them up and charge them up about something, uh, you know, and just kind of tell them how, how I felt, you know, that I didn't appreciate such, such, such. And, uh, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost said two things to me. The Holy Ghost said, number one, he said, so, so you're going to come down. You're going to come down. And the second thing he said, you're going to let them know that they got your attention? Because once you finish telling them what you're going to tell them, it ain't going to stop them from saying what they want to say. I say, Lord, I'm staying on the wall. <laughs> no, but see, so, so, so here's, here's the thing now. So here's, here's, here's a situation where I found out, you know, I, I wasn't as, you know, I wasn't as strong as I thought I was. Mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to come down. I made up my mind. I'm going to come down. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, don't let folk know they got your attention with that foolishness. Stay on the wall. Yeah. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, stay on the wall. Stay on the wall. Hey, man, you, you, you fronting folk out ain't going to change what they, what they that's just going to make it worse. Yeah. Then, then whatever you say to them, they're going to go back and, and, and mess that up and lie and say you said something else anyway. Yeah. So, so just leave that alone. Yeah. You stay on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So look what he says here in, in verse number one. And, and this is concerning Jesus, because remember, if, if I faint in the day of adversity, why is that? My strength is small. My strength is small. Verse number one says, Wherefore sin, wherefore sin, we also are compassed, are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who far 
the joy. Now, that joy is this mark we've been talking about. Who for the joy that was set before him, what? Endured the cross, despising the shame that came along with enduring the cross, despising the shame, and is now set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He, he's in a place of promotion. He's in a place of exhortation. Why? Because he was able to endure yeah. the cross, endure the suffering, endure the temptation, and then even despise, discount, make light of the shame that came along with it. Yeah. Now, now, how is he able to do that? He set something before him. Right. He didn't let what was right in front of him stop him because he had something beyond what was in front of him. It was the joy, the joy of seeing the world come to, G come to God, the joy of men being able to get back in right standing, have fellowship and relationship with God, the joy of you and I being born again was not worth him not being able to endure where he was at that present time. Yeah, yeah that shame that come along with but I can endure this right now because the shame is only temporary. Yeah. In a minute, I'm going to be raised up. Yeah. I'm going to be exalted, but I cannot afford to forsake yeah. where I am right now. Yeah. How is he able to endure? Because he, he kept the mark there. Yeah. He kept the mark. I'm, I'm going to die for the sins of the world. That's the mark. And, and he kept his eyes on the mark. Look, and the Bible said we have to look at Jesus. Because look what happens now. If, if we don't, it, it picks up in verse number three. It says, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied. That word wearied, wearied means tired. You get tired and faint. Faint, that means put off. Yeah. Where? In your mind. See, that's where it starts, in your mind. It starts in your mind. Because, see, you start going through, you're dealing with pressure, you're dealing with obstacles, you're dealing with all of these things. And so, so what do you do? You, you get tired. You get tired, and when you get tired, if you don't consider him, if you don't consider Jesus, you, you don't think Jesus was tired? You don't think Jesus was weary? You don't think Jesus wanted to give up? You don't think it was a struggle? It was a challenge for Jesus? This wasn't no walk in the park for Jesus. But he endured because he kept the mark there. And that's what you have to do. You have to keep your mark there. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on your vision, on the promise that God made to you. Keep your eye on the word. Don't you dare downsize, downgrade. No, you keep your eye on that prize. Forget about what's going on behind you. Forget about what's going on around you. And forget about who's trying to distract you and look at Jesus. Who for the joy yeah. that was set before him. Now, now, what's the joy that you set before you? What's the joy you set before you where your marriage is concerned? Yeah. What's the joy you set before you where your career is concerned? What's the joy you set before you where your career and your health, your body is concerned? What's the joy have you set before you for your living and for your family? See, you got to set something before you because if you don't have anything before you that you can look at, that you can set before you, what's right there in front of you is always going to distract you and you'll go no further. Why? You don't have anything beyond where you are that you're looking to. See, that's what vision is all about. You being able to see beyond what you currently see. Yeah, I see it, but I ain't going to be moved by it. I see it, but I ain't going to let it stop me. I see it, but I'm not going to get tired. Why? Because I got something on the other side of what I'm going through right now. You got to consider Jesus. If you don't consider Jesus, you're going to become weary. You're going to get tired. And folks, when you get tired, what do you want to do, do when you get tired? You want to stop. You want to quit. When you get tired, nobody want to keep going when they're tired. You get tired, you want to quit. Well, I'm going to go. What's wrong? I'm tired. I ain't, I don't pray no more. Well, I'm just, I'm just tired. I ain't believing God for that no more. Why? Man, I'm, I'm just tired. I see it all the time. I'm just, I'm just tired, Pastor. I'm just tired. So you don't want to pray? I don't want to pray. You don't want to confess? Well, I ain't confessing. I'm tired. I've been doing all that. I'm tired. Have you considered Jesus? The Bible said Jesus resisted to the point of blood. He resisted so much. The blood start dripping from him like sweat. 
Now, that's, that's going to the max. Now, have you resist? The, the Bible says, it, it, he says, uh, lest you become weary and faint in your own minds. Uh, I think verse 4, verse 4 of that talks about him resisting. It, well, that is right there. He says, ye have not yet resisted unto blood. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't bleeding yet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see no blood on you. Yeah. <laughs> how you going to quit? Forget blood. You ain't even sweating yet. How you, how you going to quit? But that's what happened. When you quit, when you get tired, yeah. you want to quit. Now, if you quit in your day of adversity, what does that reveal? I'm weak. I'm weak. I thought I was strong. Because you can say you're strong. But when, when the test come, when the challenge come, we're going to find out whether or not you're strong. And you can't fake strength. Can't fake strength. Amen. Amen. All right, go to Psalms 27. Psalms 27. You can't quit. Oh, there's so many days I wanted to, wanted to quit. And you don't always want to fight the fights that you... And, and the thing of it is, you don't, you know, you know, some things you can walk away from, but, but sometimes you don't, you don't get to decide whether or not you're going to be faced with this. Challenges don't check your schedule to see if this is a good time for you. Challenges don't ask you if I can tie you up for two weeks with something. <laughs> they, they just come and just invade your life. <laughs> and if you're not strong, you, you're going you're gonna to quit. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna get tired and you're going you're gonna to put off. You're going you're gonna to put it off. Well, you know, I'm, I'm through with that. I'm through with that, all right? Verse 13, Psalm 27. Listen to David. Listen to what David said. David said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord, where? In the land of the living. David said, I, I know what it is. Yeah. David said, I've been there. I know what it is. And he said, let me tell you something. I would have fainted unless I had believed to see. The only reason I didn't faint, he said, I would have. But the only reason I didn't, because I believed to see something. Yeah. I believed to see something other than what I saw. Yeah. And I believed to see the goodness of God, not in the sweet by and by, yeah. not on the other side, but I believed to see the goodness of the Lord. Where? In the land of, it's going to change right now. That's what he said. That's what he said. He said, but, I, but had I not believed, had I not believed beyond what I saw, yeah. I would have fainted. I would have quit. I would have yeah. caved in. I would have threw in the towel. I would have said, forget it. I'm done with that. I'm not praying for that no more. I'm not believing God no more. I'm tired. I'm out of here. David said, I would have done that. The only reason I did, the only reason I did, yeah. because I believed that I would see. I believed that what I was experiencing, this was not God's best for me. Yeah. I believed that the Word of God was going to manifest in my life. David said, that's what I believe. And I believed I'd see it in the land of the living. I believe God wasn't through with me yet. I believe I was on my way somewhere. I believe this situation was going to turn for me. David said, that's what I believe. And so when you're going through, when it doesn't look good, when you're not seeing the goodness of God, what do you believe? What do you believe? What do you believe? David said, I believe to see the goodness of God. This thing ain't gonna get better. Yeah. I don't care what my neighbors see right now. Yeah. Yeah. I see something else. Oh, yeah. I, see, yeah. I see goodness on the way. Yeah. I see favor about to break loose in my life. Yeah. I see God helping me. Yeah. I see God turning my situation around. Yeah. I see God manifesting his word in my life. I see the promise of God being made manifest and becoming a reality in my life. That's what I believe. I don't believe what the doctor said. I don't believe the negative report. I don't believe what I see. I believe I see God's goodness manifest in my life, praise God. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. The troubling of your heart is determined by what you choose to believe. 
I choose to believe I'm going to see goodness in the land of the living. And if I see it, see, you got to see it first. And once you see it, and God set the table in the presence of your enemies, your laughers, your critics, them scorners and those haters that been talking about you, been talking about what they see, but you've been seeing something else. And that's why you ain't moved by what you see. And you're not letting what you see determine how you're going to walk by faith. David said, I believed I'd see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, now, had I not believed that, I would have fainted. Because David said, I had something that was worthy of fainting. And the only reason I didn't faint is because I kept believing that I was going to see goodness. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Can I tell you something? Goodness is looking for you. Goodness is on its way to your house. Goodness is going to show up and run over you like a tsunami. Goodness is going to knock on your door and you need to open the door and let goodness come on in and let it bless your life. Praise God. I shall see goodness in the land so listen, I ain't singing no old song where well, one of these days on the other side in the sweet by and by it's going to be over. No, 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 baby. One of these days right here in the land of the living, what I'm going through, it is going to be over. It ain't going to be like this all the way. I'm not going to be stuck right here all the way. I'm going to another place. Praise God. Yes, Hallelujah. No, he said, in the land, in the land of the living, where they keep getting up and laying down. In the land of the living, where they keep driving by and looking at where I am right now. In, in the land of the living. That's why I'm going to see goodness manifest in the land of the living. Yeah, one of these mornings won't be long. You'll look for me, and I'll be gone to another neighborhood, yeah. praise God. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. My zip code about to change, praise God. Yes, it is. That's <laughs> what he said. That's what he said. Now, 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 look how you get there. Notice what he says. Look at verse 14. He says, wait yeah. on the Lord. Yeah. See, remember I told you now the key to courage is what? Being able to wait on God. Yeah. He, he says, now, now look, he's saying, so he's telling us what he had to do. Because although I, he was expecting to see goodness, his situation didn't change. Yeah. His situation stayed the same, yeah. but his believing kept going forward. And he says, wait on the Lord. Here's what wait means. Look with expectancy. Look with expectancy. He's expecting God to do something. He says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall, what? Strength. See, that's, that's how he's going to make you strong. He, he, if you wait on him, if you wait on him, he will strengthen your heart. L look, he comes back, he backdoors and says what? Wait, I say on the Lord. That, that's going to be the key, you being able to wait on God. You not retreating. You not going back. You not giving up, but staying right there and waiting on God. Why? Because I got a promise from God. This is what God said, and I believe God's true to his word. He can't lie. If he said it, he's going to do it. If he spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. I don't know how. I don't know when, but I'm going to wait. Wait on God. Job said all the days of my appointed time, I'm going to wait until my change come. Praise God. Wait on the Lord. Stories told of a, a little boy who was, he and his dad lived in the country. 
And while they was living in the country, the weather was getting real bad. But the father needed to go in the town. He needed to go in the town because there were some things he needed to pick up. And he left the boy there by himself. He said, now, son, I don't care what happens. I want you to wait here till I get back. And I'm coming back. And so when the dad left, the storm, it accelerated and, and got real bad. Yeah. Got so bad, the flood came in. Yeah. Made it difficult for the father to get back to the son. And so while the son was in the house, they came by, the rescue people, they came by. First, the neighbors were, were trying to get him out. They said, young man, you need to, you need to come on because it's, it's getting bad and we're getting ready to evacuate. He said, I would, but my daddy told me to stay right here <laughs> till he come back. My daddy, he coming back to get me. He said, no, your dad, he's not going to be able to get in because they're not letting anybody in. They're letting everybody out, but they're not letting anybody in. He said, no, but my daddy told me he going to come back and get me. And I believe what my daddy said. Say, yes, son, but it's getting real bad. Say, okay, son, we're going to have to leave. Now, before we leave, we're going to give you another chance to come on and go with me. He said, no, I'm just going to stay right here and wait on my daddy. And while he was standing there waiting on his daddy, the storm got real bad. It got real boisterous. The wind was boisterous. And then next thing you know, you know, the house began to reel and rock. Little wooden frame house, it began to reel and rock. All of a sudden, the house was washed away by the water. And when it was washed away by the water, so by this time, the rescuers have come by. And the little boy, he's outside hanging on to a tree. And the rescuers came over to him. They say, son, listen, you need to come on and go with us because it's getting real bad and you could lose your life out here. He said, no, my daddy told me that he coming back to get me. And I'm going to wait right here until my daddy come. And so he said, son, let me tell you something. Your daddy not going to be able to get you because they're not allowing anybody in. They letting them out, but they're not letting them back in. And so he said, son, the best thing for you to do is come go with us. He said, no, the best Best thing for me to do is just stay right here and wait on my dad. I, I'm willing to take that risk. I'm willing to risk my own life by the word of my daddy. My daddy say he's coming, and so my daddy is coming. And so it wasn't long after that his father showed up. And when his father showed up, his father had ran into the rescuers. And the rescuers say, we went to your son, and we tried to get him out, but he wouldn't come out. And he said, well, that's okay. I'll take care of that. And so by the time he made it to his son, he asked him a question. He said, son, now why didn't you leave with the neighbors? He said, daddy, I would have left, but I had your word that you was coming back. You said that you was coming back to get me. And daddy, I believe what you say. And daddy, even when the rescuers came, they said the same thing. But daddy, I held on to your word. They thought I was holding on to a tree, but I was holding on to your word. I was holding on to what you said. And that's what I come here to tell you tonight. You got to hold on to what God said. If he said it, he's going to do it. Praise God. You got to hold on to what God said. You can't give up. You can't quit. You can't throw in the towel. Wait on the Lord. Praise God. You got to wait on God. And he will strengthen your heart if you wait on him. Amen. God's true to his word. God has trapped himself by his word. Whatever he said, he has bound himself by his word. And for him not to keep his word, he loses his integrity. He said heaven and earth would pass away before one jot, before one tittle of my word not come to pass. And I'm telling you, everything God promised you, you just need to stay there and you just need to wait on it. Why? Because it's on the way. It's on the way. It's coming to your house. Praise God. You got to wait on God. You got to wait on God. And God is going to strengthen your heart. David said, wait, I say, on the Lord. Let everybody else walk away. Let everybody else start depending on everything else. But you keep waiting on God. Tell your neighbor, I'm waiting on God. Come on, tell him again. Say, I'm waiting on God, man. I, and and I, I was just getting ready to make my own decision, but I decided tonight I'm going to wait on God. Praise God. You got to wait on God because things are working in your favor. But you have to wait on God. Watch this. Watch this. Go to, go to Isaiah 40. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Isaiah 40. 
I'm waiting on God. Hallelujah. I'm going to wait on God. I'm going to wait on God. Isaiah 40, verse 28, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching to his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait. I said, but they that wait. I said, but they that wait. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, he's talking about me now. He said, they that wait, come on, talk to me, upon the Lord. Come on, shall do what? Renew their strength. They shall do what? Mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Why? Because they waiting on God. Something supernatural begins to happen when you choose to wait on God. Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. I told you the key to courage is knowing how to wait on God. It's the key to courage. What you going to do? You, you going to wait on God? Are you, are you going to move? You going to move with the crowd or are you going to wait on the cloud? Make up your mind what you going to do. And watch this. Watch this. Go to, got to read this. Isaiah 49. You in Isaiah? Isaiah 49. Look at Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. Yeah. I'm going to wait on God. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 49, you there? Verse 23, the last sentence of verse 23 says what? Come on. God's not going to disappoint you. Those that wait upon the Lord shall not be ashamed. God will not bring you to shame. That's why Jesus was able to despise the shame. Because he knew that God was going to bring him to a place where there would be no more shame. Hallelujah. People have seen you in your shame days. But I'm telling you, God's getting ready to eradicate all the shame. Yeah, they seen you in your shame. They, they seen it when it, it was a shame when they pulled up and had to pull your car off. Yeah. It was a shame when they put that notice on your door and told you you had so many days to back away and get out of there. It was a shame when you got laid off on your job and you couldn't pay your bill. You couldn't feed your family. It was a shame when they saw what you and your wife had been going through. But I'm telling you, God's getting ready to erase all the shame. Why? Because he's getting ready to turn your situation around. For they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. That's what God said. God said, anybody waiting for me, you shall not be ashamed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's read this last one. Go to Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64. The key to courage is being able to wait on God. Because, see, when you wait on God, you develop a dependency upon him. Amen. Isaiah 64, verse 4. Now, you know what uh, uh, Corinthians said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of them the good thing that God has prepared for those what? That love him. Well, watch this in verse number 4. It says, from since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear. Neither has the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that waited for him. I'm telling you, folk ain't seen yet what God's going to do for you if you choose to wait for him. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. All they hear about is what you've been going through. They don't hear about what you're getting ready to go to. They hadn't even heard yet. They hadn't even heard the good things that God has prepared for those who wait on him. God has things prepared. God has things on reserve. God has things in storage. He prepared them. He put them up in a vault. 
and it's put there for those who wait on it. That's why when God get ready to bless me, he go to the vault and get my stuff. <laughs> why? Because I've been waiting on it. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to wait on God. And God will show you some stuff you ain't even know about. God will blow your mind if you choose to wait on him. Let nobody rush you. Amen. No, I'm going to wait on the Lord. Amen. Hey, you wait on God if you want to, child. I got, I got to bust a move. <laughs> well, you going to bust a move then because I'm going to be right here waiting on God. Yeah. And you lying to bust more than the move, you get out there and do something on your own. Amen. I'm going to wait on God. Amen. I've seen what happened. Yeah when you wait on God. Yeah. I've seen how it turn out yeah. when you wait on God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Because yeah. see, if you wait on God, the person God's going to use to bless you, they ain't even got their stuff in yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you better hear what I'm saying. See, you don't, you don't, you don't know what's going on. You don't, you don't know what the delay is. Yeah. Yeah. See, the delay could be somebody that God had already spoke to about doing something for you, and they struggling to obey God, and that's why you just got to wait. You can't get ahead of God. You just got to choose to wait. We had an opportunity. We had an opportunity. Now, watch this. I was out of town a couple of days ago. And a couple of weeks ago, and, and while I was out of town, we got a phone call from uh, a Christian network, a Christian network called the church. And, and, and what they wanted to do, they wanted, they wanted to come here and, and they wanted to air their program from here. They wanted to air their program for here, from here. They were going to interview me. I was going to preach. And, and, and then they, were, they, were gonna, they wanted the choir here, wanted the praise team, wanted the whole church to come out, and they was going to do a live show from here. And so when they, when they contacted me when I was out of town, I said, oh, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, let's, let's roll. That sounds that sound good. They said it's going to reach 27 million people, 27 million households. I said, oh, yeah, we're ready for that. We're going to interview you, Pastor, and, and we're going to let you preach and going to let the choir sing. It's just going to be an awesome night of worship. And they was going to bring all the equipment out and all that. And I said, yeah, let's do it. I called, hey, y'all get it. Y'all make sure you contact contact them. You know, get the, get the contracts. Give it to the attorneys. Let them look at it. Let them see. You know, we're ready to roll. And then... So after we got everything, talked to the lawyer, lawyer looked over the contract, the lawyer said, yeah, everything's good, you know, da 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 go ahead, you know, pastor, everything's fine, da 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 And then the Lord said, don't do it. <laughs> I said, Lord, that's 27 million people. <laughs> 27 million household. Lord said, don't do it. Now, we not already committed, told the folk we was going to do it. They just waiting on us to send contract back. I called uh, my, my assistant. I said, listen, I said, look, look call them back and just tell them uh, we, we're not going to do it. We're not going to move forward at this time. Well, is anything wrong? Everything's fine. I mean, nothing, nothing's wrong. We, we just can't do it. Why am I telling you that? Because I'm waiting on God. Amen. Now, 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 I believe God to expose this ministry. Yeah. Now, if you can pass up 27 million, All right. I wonder what God got up for you. See, if I'd have just been concerned about myself, oh, I get to preach and, uh, and 20, you know, I can call all my friends across the country, tell them to tune in. It wasn't about that. Amen. God said, don't do it. Amen. Wait on God. Eyes haven't seen. All right. Ears haven't heard. It hadn't entered into the heart the things that God has for those who wait on him. I'm waiting on God. I wasn't waiting on the, on the television station. I was waiting on God, and I'm still waiting on God. Amen. I said, what about you? Can, you? can you wait on God? Can you wait on God? Can you wait on what God has for you? Amen. 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 You got to make up your mind. You're going to wait on God. Let me, let me, let me get, because I'm done. So, so let, me, let me show you how to wait. Let me tell you what you need to do while you're waiting. Number one, give you five things right quick. Number one, keep praying. Keep praying while you're waiting. Keep praying. Don't stop praying. Why? The Bible said men ought to always pray and not to faint. If you're not praying, you're going to faint. 
So you got to keep praying. Number two, keep praising. Keep praising while you're waiting. Keep praising God. Keep praising Him, thanking Him for your answer. The Bible says Abraham was strong in faith because he kept praising God. So you, you have to keep praising. Number three, keep professing. You got to keep saying what God said. Keep calling those things that be not as though they were. Keep declaring your end from your beginning. You have to keep professing. Jesus is the high priest over our profession. So you got to keep saying something for your priest to go to work for you. Number four, keep patience. Don't you dare get impatient. Don't you dare let patience go. Keep patience. Patience is being consistently constant in doing the same thing and acting as if your breakthrough has already come. You want to be patient? You got to picture in your mind how you're going to act when that thing come through and start acting like that now. And then number five, keep persevering. Keep persevering. Keep persevering. You got to keep persevering. Got to keep pressing. Got to keep going toward it. Don't let the enemy turn you around from it. You got to keep going toward it. That things that, that later period and I, we had to pursue. We had to, we had to go, go after. We, we, we had to go back and strengthen ourselves because got to get a little bit stronger so we can go over there. You know, you got to keep doing that. Got to keep persevering. Yeah. Yeah. Got to keep pressing. Yeah. Got to keep getting strong and keep waiting on God. Yeah. Amen. 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 Shout, God, I'm going to wait on you. Say it again. I'm going to wait on you, God. And he's going to come through for you. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand for the word tonight. <laughs> well, I trust that you were blessed by what you heard today. This teaching was from 2014. That's actually 10 years ago where I taught a series entitled The Courage to Begin Again. I trust that by now you have the courage that it takes. Many times we have the faith. We have the desire, we have the vision for it, but we just lack the courage. Courage is what gets us moving. Courage is what causes us to take that daring step. I'm just believing God that you would be courageous, just like God said to Joshua. He commanded him to be courageous. He commanded him to be strong, and I am issuing that same command to you, and that is the command to be strong, the command to be courageous. Why? Because if you do, you're going to do all that God has planned for you to do, all that God has put in your heart to do, because you acted on courage, and you acted courageously throughout the process. Glory be to God. So I'm excited about what's about to take place in your life because you step into the courage that God already put on the inside of you. It just needs to be released and stepped into so you can get to the destiny that God has planned for you. Glory be to God. I trust you were blessed by the teaching. I know you were. Right now, I want to take the time to extend an invitation for someone or some persons to give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want to take it for granted just because you're watching that you're in right standing with God that you're born again. Now, all you have to do, it's not hard, it's not difficult. All you have to do is make a confession of Jesus being Lord, but you have to believe in your heart that Jesus died for you, that he was buried and raised from the grave so you can step into this new life that he has for you. Now, of course, you gotta turn away from all your sins and do all of those things, but to receive him, it takes a confession and a belief. The Bible says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So let's do that right now. Just repeat after me. Dear God, without Jesus, I am lost. Without Jesus, I am yet in my sins. But right now, I believe your word. You said if I confess with my mouth, Jesus as Lord, and believe in my heart that Jesus died for me, he was buried, 
and raised from the grave, I shall be saved. So right now I confess, Jesus, you are Lord. I believe in my heart that you died for me. You were buried and raised from the grave. And right now, by faith, I believe that I am saved. And I want to thank you, Father, for saving me. Now fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can have the power to live the life that brings glory to you. In Jesus' name. <laughs> glory be to God. If you prayed that prayer, if you made that confession, I want you to know if you believed it in your heart, you have been translated out of one kingdom and placed into another, out of the kingdom of darkness. You are now in the kingdom of light and you have been made one of God's dear children. Glory be to God. So you are now son of God, a daughter of God, and we celebrate your newfound relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen and glory be to our God. And now we want to give you an opportunity to give today, an opportunity to honor the Lord with our gifts. The Bible said God loves cheerful givers and cheerful givers, they love giving. We are cheerful givers. We love opportunity. Oh yeah, we look forward to opportunities so we can give, so we can honor the Lord. We honor God with the tithe and with our offerings, with love gifts and, and all the other things we give to here in the ministry. All the information is on the screen so that you can give. But let's give to the Lord today. Let's honor, let's give to his work. And when we honor him with our substance, he's going to see to it that our barns, that our accounts, our investment accounts, savings accounts, operating accounts, those accounts are filled with plenty. Amen. And when we have plenty, that means we'll have more than enough to take care of our personal responsibilities and needs, to be a blessing to someone else, to take care of the house of God, and then have enough to put back in store. Now, if you've given, I want you to make this confession with me. I have freely given, and I shall freely receive hundredfolds, thousandfolds, millionfolds in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much for honoring the Lord today with your substance by giving to this ministry. Well, again, I trust you were blessed by the word of God. Now, listen, I want to invite you out on Sunday. Now, Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. You know, this is, I mean, this is the highlight of the Christian faith. I mean, our faith hinges on the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to come out and be with us. We're going to have an amazing celebration, both our 730 and our 930 worship experience. Of course, for our 930 worship experience, we have our pre-service at 915, but praise and worship begins at 930. But we're going to have an amazing time, a powerful time, an exciting time in both of our worship experiences. We're going to receive some, uh, you know, just ministry from our dancers, our singers, and also our drama ministry. Uh, they're going to be doing some things. I'm going to be preaching the Word of God. I'm teaching a message, preach the message entitled, It Is Finished. Just put that in the comment section right now. It is finished. And I want you to come out and join us. It's going to be very exciting. This is Resurrection Sunday. Now listen, those of you, we want to try to get everybody in the sanctuary that we can. We have people sometimes who come to both services. Now, if you're staying over for the second service, you normally attend the first service, stand over for the second service, we ask you to either be seated at the rear so that other people who come in for that second service can have uh, the seating that they need to engage and enjoy the worship experience. And so we want to keep everything tight. This, that's right. Well, this is a good problem, but we want to keep everything tight so we can get as many people in the sanctuary as possible on this Resurrection Sunday. So we look to see you on Sunday morning at 7.30 or 9.30 right here at the City of Restoration. Well, you know, we're restoring lives with the Word of God. And when your life is restored, you shall have double. Because He lives, we live.
The Christian faith is grounded in the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Jesus conquered death on the cross and was raised from the grave on the third day. Join us on Sunday, March 31st at 7.30 a.m. or 9.30 a.m. for the time of celebration, worship, and preaching as we commemorate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Jesus the the Christ. Christ. Thank you for tuning in to our winning Wednesday broadcast here at Word of Restoration International Church. And we pray that you were blessed by this life-changing message. We are restoring lives with the Word of God. And when your life is restored, you shall have double.